Welcome to EIP IP meeting 68. I have shared agenda in chat. Today we have small agenda items, a small number of agenda items, but I think the discussion is going to be relatively bigger. Uh, so the biggest point of discussion today here is um, external link policy. So I have tried collecting all the related documents, proposals, issues, and pull requests here in agenda. Uh, I see a discussion started by Greg on cat herders discord about perennial external references. Later on, there are some questions by Sam Wilson on ACD discord. There are two HackMDs, one by Victor, one by Sam for some general solution and also issues and pull requests here. So I know Sam, you have tried to summarize that and put it into a question format. If you would like to give a high level overview of the dispute, like people, we are not having consensus on uh, what kind of external link policy should be there. And then we can start probably discussing from there. Uh, sure. So I guess um, I put up EIP 5757, um, which I'm just now realizing is a pretty nice number. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it, it kind of contains a, 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 a framework for doing external sources. And um, some of the requirements in that EIP are a little contentious. Uh, the first one being uh, like no paid research, like no, pay, no linking to things behind a pay, paywall. Um, and Greg is... Uh, of a mind that if the EIP depends on a paid resource, then we have no choice but to link to it. Um, and myself, Matt and Panda, I think we're all in agreement that we do not want any paid resources to be linkable. That's probably the most contentious item. Um, I think there's a few other questions around like wording and, and particular like like particular details, but I, I haven't heard any criticisms of like the overall process. So yeah the the questions you were talking about are, I, I asked in the all core devs discord were specifically about whether all core devs would pay to access resources um and and a few questions about like the durability and immutability of linked sources so like uh whether or not uh you can link to a blog post or a twitter post or a reddit post um and whether an archive.org link of the same is also acceptable um so we're just trying to figure some stuff out like that. But I think I think the details are all in 5757 if anybody wants to read it. Nice summary. Thank you. Uh, I see that only we have received one response from Matt. So Matt, if you would like to share that here. Against the requirement of paid content for each, I think basically everybody is except for Greg. Okay, so uh, if I get this correct, most of the people are against the paid content except Greg. So, oh, good thing we are having Greg on the call. Welcome, Greg. Greg, can you hear us? Yeah, I'm here. Morning, Greg. So we were discussing the first item uh, that is the external link policy. Um, mm -hmm. ba based on the questions, those are shared on all core dev discord by Sam Wilson. We were discussing about thoughts. It looks yeah. like um, there is some disagreement with that. If you would like to share it with us. Yeah. Well, I noticed I, I'm late because over on all core devs, the topic just exploded. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I know. I posted in advance of the call, and then during the call, people start talking about it. Um, I'm again mostly thinking we're making hard policy in advance of choices we don't need to make yet. Um, but there's obviously you go for the highest quality source you can find. And when you get down to normative stuff, you at some point you have to reference what you have to reference. Um, 
I don't know if people are against referencing like a published piece. I'm just against like it being like a requirement for understanding. The, like I think that we should like, you know, kind of rewrite the portion that is a requirement for even the specification and say it's just first derived in this work and cited. You, you want to write the proofs of how BLS works? I don't think that we need to write the proofs. I think we've already accepted that BLS works. Well, if we were to generalize that to, let's say, a new crypto algorithm, like, do you need the proofs of how that crypto algorithm works in EIP? And I would say the answer is no, because you don't need to know how it works to implement it. But that's just my opinion. But you need Agreed. you need a reference for the reader to find out how does this work. It, if if you're trying to implement something, you need references to how to implement everything. <laughs> The specifications should describe how to implement it, in my opinion, fully. And if that that's requires like possible, if you, I mean, that just goes layer by layer all the way down to the hardware. At some point you draw a line and say, go look here, or you just refer to the term and assume that the reader can figure it out. Sometimes that's what you do, but. Right. And we've generally like set that boundary at cryptography. And I think that that's okay. Yeah, I, I don't know why we're trying to be bigger hard asses than any other standards organization that I've dealt with. I'm really not trying to be. I mean, this is an incredibly it, painful yeah. process for me too. Well, we're making it painful. It's just a reference is a reference and occasionally they rot and it's not, it's not like the end of the world. I agree. <laughs> Greg, what do you think about referencing these additional resources in the Fellowship of Ethereum Magician page? Like we definitely, I mean, I, I feel like we need to set a boundary what can go into the specification in EIP and what can be left out for any educational resources that are currently not allowed. And we think that it is not directly related to specs. Maybe it is only for references purposes. Can we not have it on FEM thread sharing? These are the additional resources to follow along. I. I guess I'm just not seeing why this became such a big problem. The, the IETF has been dealing with this for many years, and I suggest their policy is a, a good place to start. Um, we, we can keep bringing up examples of bad links, and for the most part, they should simply not be, should not be needed. Um, well, I mean, I think that the IETF is, has a bit of a different angle because it tends to have a lot more of an academic footprint. And so there's a lot of citations that are academic journals that maybe do cost money if you're not part of that community. And I don't think like for crypto, most people have access to that stuff. There's, of course, there's like free ways of accessing it. And I'm always, yeah. not super against like linking to academic pieces because it's pretty much commonly accepted that it's okay. Well, um, things, a reference is a reference. They actually consider links to be optional, but what's needed is a reference, you know, the author of the title, enough information to find it. And right, but all of the references, most of the references in the IETF RFCs are to quote unquote published documents, which are retrievable yeah. via those mechanisms. And we... Yeah link to a lot of things that are like URL native. I think our general policy should be linked first. And that includes, uh, you know, references to academic pieces. So, so to be clear, in 5757, it doesn't specify whether it's a, a URL or like an APA or a whatever citation. It's anything that refers to an external document is, is a link. Um, just, just to clear up the terminology there. Yeah. I I'm suggesting we have a reference section um, as, as the most straightforward way to do it is there's a reference section and anything external, there's a citation and the citation um, gives the information someone needs to find this thing. Um, 
So the, yeah, no, I agree with that entirely. Title, whatever. And as far as links, sometimes there is no link. Usually there's one or more links and they should be the highest quality you can find. Um, so the journal of publication is a good link, even though it's even though it's locked up, it's the publisher's link. So it's a place to start. Uh, if there's a DOI identifier, that's a good link. Um, the, the author, the author, the editor, the reviewer, someone can do a little work to try to find high quality links um, that aren't paywalled. And last resort, um, whoever's implementing it has to get the information somehow, but you've given them a big leg up on finding the information. Um, and if it's information that's necessary to implement it, that seems to be a much bigger favor to the author um, than um, concentrating on, on whether a link might go dead in the future. That, that if it goes dead in the future, it can be fixed in the future. So, I mean, as kind of a crazy counterexample, would you be all right if I started replace like any core EIP I write is going to be a link to my website in the specification section where they have to pay me $100 to read it? Would that be an acceptable way of publishing EIPs? Um, it would certainly be a very low quality link and I'd be looking for, isn't there a better way to do this? And if it's your own website, um, you would have the rights to it and wouldn't we say let's put that in the assets sure sure i'm just saying like as an eip author i can refuse to do that and force yeah, people to it, pay to access it but th these are decisions we can make when the eip is in front of us better than trying to make a policy to cover all possible um <laughs> all possible futures if we want yeah, I, mean, I think we just need to be using more common sense. Yeah, it's just not that hard. It's easy to come up with lousy counter examples, but mostly authors aren't going to do silly things like that. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure about that, but yeah, I don't know. I think, like, I, I really don't think there's much of a problem with having like a list of places that we allow. Like, I don't know why, like, why there's a lot of opposition to that particular idea. Uh, a, a few of them, um, yeah, it can become a long list. I yeah, checked, it can be checked automatically, though, right? Like, that's the point. I may have misread, but I checked to making the author go through the work of making their source beyond that list. J just because we've said that's a cool link for this article doesn't mean this is a cool source for all possible links. You know, it could be as a last resort, this is the source we used for this link. Uh, we don't recommend it in general. It, it really is. I could see a small list of things that just are obviously fine. Um, and after that, it, it gets case by case. And the academic literature is hard because so much of it is paywalled. That's, that's just an unfortunate fact. Um, there's there's a story that uh, when Reagan came in, one of his people um, in charge of PubMed, I think the NIH director, was going to insist that anything listed on PubMed would have to uh, have a publicly accessible copy online to be listed. And uh, that guy got fired. So uh, this is the world we're, we're stuck with. Um, but. So, um, Greg, I would like to share a couple of uh, thoughts from my end here. I, am, I don't know how much it is relevant in terms of IETF standard and for Ethereum. I understand that it could be a good practice to follow something that is coming from a reputable organization, but I believe that with Ethereum, we are not only trying to create this educational resources and other things, but why we are trying to make it a policy instead of case by case is something that we want to standardize the process for mm -hmm. like uh, being watchful for future proposal that is coming yeah. in. And so we don't have to argue against every single EIP author that they're 
like link to a tweet is not good enough. I, I want to avoid the situation where we get into arguments with authors every single time and we don't have a clear policy that we can just point to and say like, this is how we approve links, follow this process. Because like, otherwise we're going to get into so many arguments with people and we see it all the time already. Um, and it's like, once we automated the process with EPW, a lot of those arguments just went away and it's a lot easier now. So sure. I, 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 I'm on the fence of automating as much as possible and having a clear policy. Uh, for external links, I think. Yeah, I don't have a big problem there. Um... Yeah, I think in in fact, what we should try here is like have a standard agreement from all EIP editors, or I can say the uh, like most of the people being in favor of any decision, either to go this way or that way. But that should be as a policy that we people who are trying to help out other authors, we are not EIP editors, but trying to let them know where to go and find what to do next. We will be uh, like having some documentation or some reference to cite to people. And I believe that will help us like a lot of discussion in future. And this EIPIP meeting is especially for streamlining the process. So if we can come up upon any agreement on what is the best middle ground from where we can let other EIP authors know that beyond this line, you are not allowed to put anything into the proposal. That means into the .md file of that EIP, you are very welcome to like have it on Fellowship of Ethereum Magician and people can go and refer it over there. How, how stable a link is that really? Uh, no, here in this case, like we are not taking guarantee of a stability of the link, whatever is there in Fellowship of Ethereum Magician, but what we are providing them is the discussion tool link, which is added in EIP. And we are sharing that this is a place where you can go and add your thoughts. So when we are providing a platform that can be relevant and that cannot be relevant after a few period of time, but that is not uh, a part of a standard, right? Yeah, well, that's... That's what the discussions to link is for in the header. Um, yeah, right. So that's what I'm suggesting here. Let's start making use of that link. And only uh, where we think is directly related to specs should be put into the .md file, any additional information or the link which may or may not have paid uh, like money involved there or um, copyrights involved there should be a part of uh, like, you know, the discussion to threat, not the part of the dot md file. Yeah. But I think I've been clear enough here and I'm not, it's not important enough to me to dig down into the details of these, but. Um, so considering that, I mean, I would like to understand how people think about the 5757 proposal. Like, is it something good that can be moved forward? We can have it merged because I don't see that is merged in a repository yet. So yeah, any thoughts on that one? Or probably people who have objections, yeah. Uh, I, I need to open up the link. Is that the one that uh, Sam Wilson is adding to add the external link policy? Uh, that's yeah. right. I have shared it here in the chat. Yeah. I, I think my feedback would be, first of all, uh, it's, uh, I, I, I appreciate that effort. Uh, I think I, I want uh, the general concept I, I agree with, but I, uh, I, I think we need to make it easier to add links. At the link source, I don't think the IP shall, shall be necessary to add something in um, in a list. And then also, I, I object to the requirement for uh, a, a source to be uh, free of access um, uh, to the main assets. And we should also um, we should also have a have a broader extension. For example, like Ethereum projects should be uh, comfortable by default. Like it shouldn't be very hard for uh, Ethereum projects to be linked. Especially it should be easier for yellow paper to be linked. I think it's a little bit kind of surprise to people that they can even not uh, link to the consensus spec or the, the yellow page, the yellow paper. 
Yeah, yeah, I think those, so if we go ahead with like a trial run of 5757, I can put up a, um, like, EIPs to do like the execution specs, consensus specs, the yellow paper, um, and I can take care of all those. I, I, I don't like to have EIP, uh, have, have a requirement for a new EIP in order to add a, a, add a source. Yeah, so, that's so what I wanted to say. yeah, I'm a, I'm a little torn about that too. I think my, the reason why I specified that originally is because then each EIP gets its own discussions to thread. And I think that's somewhat useful. Um, and I, I think it's people to have a discussion. We can have a centralized discussion for all the list of new, new extension, right? New, new extension. Yeah, but like okay. then, then okay. if a source yeah. comes yeah. up again, like we can't. Sorry, you're cutting out a little bit. I, I thought you were done talking. Um, yeah. Uh, sorry, to, sorry to cut you off there. But uh, so, like, if if the source comes up again and we have the discussion on Discord, then it's it's very difficult to point somebody at the existing discussion and be like, "Here, we've already talked about it." So we'll end up having the same discussions over and over again. Um, so th th that that's my concern with not having an EIP per source. Um, yeah. EIP itself has a full workflow from draft to, to, to last call to final. And uh, if the only thing you want is a that people, you can point people to, I think I'm okay to make that as an requirement and have, let's say, two weeks of, um, of wait time. I think I can, if that is like, uh, I, can, I can make that kind of trade off. Um, I, I don't think the full four step shall be required. And I, I, I don't know if that is a good thing to add to the process. I think the general idea of having the meta E is to define the process that we would like to follow. So if we are defining a process of acceptance of external resources, Meta Eep sounds reasonable for this. The the thing is that the meta it takes too long. I'd rather have one EIP being live rather than have um, if if it, if it requires like it doesn't have to be a EIP either. We can we can add something to the EIP one or anything like to require a high bar for it to be merged in. But I I think ha asking it to be a formal EIP can take too long for people if they want to contribute and add things. <clears throat> In general, I think the allow listed uh, approach is too restrictive. I, even if the 57 placement is going into run, I, I really hope that we can restrict the, the timeline. Let's say just run it for three months, but it's only in effect for three months or six months and then see how it goes rather than like- Oh, I am so down for that. With unlimited time. You're, you're okay with uh, a yeah, time yeah. of trial run? Yeah, if you guys want to try yeah. like 57, 57 for three months, I am totally on board with that. And then we can revisit it and like see how well it worked. I'm totally okay with that kind of a plan. I mean, aren't we just okay. trying everything? <laughs> We're always trying things. Like, I don't know. I mean, nothing is set in stone. What I that is the proposal is what I'm proposing is that trial, but by default, if there's no additional approval in three months, it just I'll lose its effect. I just don't want to debate so, this again in three months. I want to make a decision. I want to fix this problem. We've been talking about it for like six months or more. I think I think it's a year now at least. I, <laughs> like yeah, I, I, I am I for years. Know. I, so I'm firmly in the camp of still no external links. Like I, I like that way easier. It's simpler, but because it comes up so much, I, I'm I'm willing to you know meet in the middle a little bit and have some kind of external links. I mean, we um, have to have so, external links. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. I I'm sorry to cut you off. Go ahead, like. No, you're fine. I'm I'm done. Yeah, I, I'm I'm so like. In, in favor of uh, external links. I, I felt that we, we lose our um, ability to make 
it, it's a it's a implement pr proposal, right? It's you trying to articulate and convince people to do something, and you need to let people put them into context. And the fact is that a lot of context needs to come in the format of link, or otherwise we'll be, we will need to have a full Wikipedia on on the. That's what I the, the assets being put onto the. The, the, the repository, it just get bigger and bigger. And it's still a You're cutting out a lot. It's hard to understand what you're saying. What is blocking us from moving forward with 5757 at this point? Uh, 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 prohibiting free, uh, non-free access, uh, non-free access content, and uh, EIP not requiring an EIP to add new books is what I would uh, be happy with. Move forward. So practically, how do we link to academic journal articles? I mean, I think that BLS is a good example. You know, insert new cryptography. We don't want to write the proofs in the EIP. We should link to it. How do we do it? You just, you just do it. What, what's so hard about this? I'm asking how to do it in the 5757 framework. Oh, sure. So in the 5757 framework, you'd pick, say, uh, DOI, right? So say you want to link to it as a DOI. So we'd have a, an EIP that defines the like format of a DOI reference. So it would probably have like title, authors, the DOI number, the publication date. And that would be just like a blob of markdown that you copy and paste yeah, into your on. EIP. That you copy and paste into your EIP and then fill it out. And then that's it. That's how you reference uh, an academic paper in 5757. Who assigns the DOI? DOI. Okay. I mean, this is great. Like, can we just merge it? This seems like it resolves our problems. Um, one one question I have for Sam is that I link, I actually put down some of the trend, uh, deployed uh, contract on Burley as ref a reference and uh, I wonder if it is, what would what, what play out in 5757 five, for this situation? So I don't know, like Etherscan probably wouldn't be a valid external source. Like uh, I, maybe, like, I don't know, maybe you guys would disagree, but I don't think Etherscan is. So linking to a reference implementation would just be linking to the bytecode on the chain. So I don't know how useful that would be. But like, sure, yeah. I mean, you can make a 5757 source for linking to an Ethereum address if you want, and then you could link to it. Uh, I don't really care. As long as we all agree that that's a valid source, we can add it. Like 5757 doesn't make any statements about what sources are allowed. It just says, these are the things that have to be met. And then we can argue about any individual source on the discussions thread. Or Sorry, I've renamed them origins now because source was confusing. So you can, uh, you can uh, argue about any individual origin of documents uh, on the discussion two thread. I guess I'm just not really understanding this then. Are you saying that in order for an author to get an origin approved, they have to submit a separate EIP for the approval of that origin? So, yeah, so for each, so like uh, Panda Pip was calling them like categories. I, I called them origins right now. I still haven't settled on a term that everybody understands, but like DOI, like the digital object identifier, Mm -hmm. system would be one origin and then anything that has a doi number would be from the same eip like the same so like 5757 would have one eip that defines all doi identifiers and then anybody who wants to use a document described by doi would just use that one eip they don't need a separate eip for every document they want to reference now i'm really confused hang on i have I sent Panda a message that kind of explains this. Let me see if I can find it. Here we go. I'm, okay. I'm also confused. Okay. Here, let me let me just read you this. It's it's not too bad. So we have an author. Let's call her Alice, right? And she wants to link to the w3c.org media capture streams specification, right? I think we can all agree that 
that is a specification that we want to allow people to link to. So the, the Alice includes this in her EIP. EIPW sees the external link and complains. It says, this is not an approved external source. You can't link to it. So Alice then reads 5757 and sees, oh, okay, I need to open an EIP allowing W3C links. So uh, she creates EIP X, whatever the number happens to be, it doesn't matter. And she describes like W3C has existed for 10 years. W3C has like a history of providing documents. Um, we can't include W3C specifications because they're not licensed appropriately for whatever reason, doesn't matter. Um, and she creates this proposal. Then editors look at this proposal and they say, okay, yeah, we like W3C. We'll approve it as a source. Now, Alice can use her link to media capture streams in her EIP. That's it. Now, Bob comes along and he wants to use, say, the geolocation API that W3C specifies. He includes the link. EIPW sees the link. And because Alice already made the proposal allowing W3C links, now Bob can link to the geolocation API without any other like extra work it's just approved okay i'm objecting to putting that load of work onto alice she's already doing the work of writing her proposal and that's that's a lot of work um and just because in that example that's probably a good source but the hard cases come down to the source just isn't a very good source and we have to decide in that case, okay, we can't find better sources, so we'll use it. Um, like I'd say, in general, links into authors' homepages at universities aren't the best links because they retire and they change universities and those links go away. But often, it's the best free link you have. So it makes sense to give more than one link. Here's the Here's the link to the publisher. I'm sorry, it's paywalled. Um, here's a DOI. Um, the DOI organization maintains where that goes to. It's a good resource. Here's a link to the author's copy. Yeah, it might go away, but it's free. Um, if it goes away in the future, uh, that's an errata that can be fixed. Um, and you just the point is to give the reader access to information. Uh, not to maintain the purity of our repository. Um, I mean, do you have an alternative proposal? Because what you're describing is how things were previously done on the repository, and it doesn't seem like people want to do it that way anymore. So I think if we want to do something other than 5757, we need a different proposal than what we were previously doing. Well, I'm, I wasn't paying attention for a while. And so I don't know where the no external links policy came from. It didn't used to be there. Um, Micah was the one who like really inst instantiated it. But I think like, you know, Sam and, and Panda are generally against external links. And if we want to move to a place where we can allow external links, we have to, you know, negotiate amongst ourselves and compromise. And to me, 5757 is a compromise that's not perfect, but it, is going to resolve many of the issues that we're having. And I think we should do it. Does EIP one currently forbid them? It doesn't. Okay. Then I'm happy to have, I'm happy. I think we should have a reference section very much along the lines of what the IETF recommends. Um, and I think the general policy laid out here is fine. Things like 10 years and such, we're just being too specific. Um, I see the point of the editors maintaining a list of sources that we don't even have to think about. If you're using these sources, um, no problem. Um, and then it does come down to judgment calls. Um, it but just, the, the, the point of the 5757 is the compromise of we're not going to make the judgment calls per EIP. We're going to make the judgment calls per source. And that, if you want to. That's what doesn't work. Yeah, but this is the compromise that we're trying to make. Like what you're proposing is how things were previously done. And many of the editors are against it. I am like personally not against it. Like I think common sense makes sense to me and I would be happy to do it. But I've been trying to make that happen for over one year and it hasn't. And the only like reasonable solution that's like really been worked out is 5757. And so I would like to move forward with it. 
Okay. Uh, and I'm okay revisiting this in three months. Like, we can just be like, did it work? We're going to revisit it every single meeting. <laughs> okay. Let's have a moratorium on revisiting it for a little while, and then we can come back to it and see if we're happy with it. Because, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, you know, this is a horrible process, and everybody hates it, and it just hurts everybody. And I'm totally okay with scrapping it after after we give it a trial run. So, My only big objection is putting the author through the work um of creating yet another eip and cre you know having all these eips that don't do anything but say we approve this source yeah um, because i don't want to approve sources in general just just because for particular eip we decided um that this particular low quality link was the best that we could do it doesn't mean that we're blessing that source for all time we're just saying in this case this particular low quality link was the best we could do. Um, and I, I'm giving the wording we have now, which is that it says should not and not must not. So, you know, if, it still gives us the freedom on a case by case basis to approve a, a link. Well, then I have to start really digging in because I'm not quite sure what obviously allow means because I'm not a lawyer. Um, that's been a problem with the assets all along. <laughs> um, some some things are obviously recopyable, and other things, um, you yeah, know, who's going to judge there? Um, and as soon as you move them to assets, you pull them out of their original context. So that that's a hard call. Um, so you're objecting to the like um, the redistribution, like first requirement. I'm uh, just saying who's who's to say you got to you, you step into a quagmire right away. Uh. Well, I mean, I think obviously redistributable is things like RFCs, which say the distribution of this memo is unlimited. Like some things are very clear cut allowed to be redistributed. Right. That's that's where you need a that's where you need a policy or a clear judgment uh, that says, yes, we can put this in assets. Because then we're acting as a publisher and we have to respect the copyright of what we're publishing. Um, it's that's a hassle, but there it is. Um, okay, so if yeah. we remove the requirement for um, redistrib the redistribution requirement, would you be okay with 5757? Yeah, I just don't know quite how to state the requirement. Well, that's fine. We, we could just take it out for now and then figure it out. I, I don't mind doing that. Um, yeah, there's I some also, actual. I, I think there's yeah. still a problem that author needs to submit the uh, the EIP, right? The the author needs. The to, author doesn't have to submit the source. EIP. The editors can do it. Anybody can do it. Okay, but is. But that's a long process, right? I, I'm it is a long process. process. It does. I mean, there's really only process. three to five links that I think we're like coming up all the time. That I mean, once we get the ability to link to the consensus specs, to DOIs, to RFCs, I think like most of the problems go away. Uh, what about Go ETH? What about Ethereum? We shouldn't link to Geth. We shouldn't link to Geth. Why is that no. when people point that, hey, this is a working implementation, then wouldn't that be a better version than a reference implementation that has not been co-tested? No, we need to be moving to using the execution spec. But you can add, add that as a reference implementation, right? I, I, if people have that incline, in, in, in inclination to add various implementation links there. And also, it's a stronger argument saying, hey, these three clients have already implemented I just don't think that that's something that should really be existing in the EIP. We can revisit, like, modifying the EIP template. I think these are generally things that should exist in the uh, magician's thread. Like, here's the implementations. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you don't you don't think that Go ETH to be added as a, a, as a source? I don't think we can allow Go Ethereum as a reference implementation because it is GPL'd, right? I mean, traditionally, we've like had the list of like here are implementations, and people can just like click the link to them. 
Yeah, but we have the execution yeah. specs now, so I think yeah, you know, agreed. We should stop doing that. What about solidity? Let's say why, some of why would we link to solidity? Let's say some of the storage has claim of backward compatibility arguments and says this is because that you make this decision. Mind of uh, com compilers has this behavior, and that's why we need to be careful of this. Uh, security consideration or anything. Would if there's a reason to link to something, like we can open uh, EIP to add it as a permissible origin. Yep. Like, I really don't see there being more than like 10 of these things at the extreme. Like, <laughs> How many times, like, we've gotten by over the past year without external links. So I, I think we can get by allowing some external <laughs> links without too much trouble. Well, if you, like, force people to not link to things, like, you have two choices. Either they would, they, they, they can not submit an EIP, which is happening, or let it get that become stagnant. Or uh, they would just remove links and reduce the quality of their articulation. That's what's happening too, uh, in the like Web three provide chip, object provider. Like I, I don't. I mean, we I, generally I shouldn't we... allow everyone to submit an EIP. Like there needs to be some rigor for what is accepted, and I think that having a link policy that is a bit restrictive keeps the quality of the EIPs a bit higher. Like just letting someone willy nilly link to Twitter or to blog posts and stuff, I think creates poor quality use. So uh, as a great example of that, the um, the merge EIP um, was just awful. It had links to like tweets and random blog posts by Vitalik and like at least three of the links were dead. And it's just like, we need to not do that, right? Like we aren't a normal standards organization because like, there are no restrictions on who can publish EIPs. So we need to have like a streamlined process for keeping the quality up. And that's kind of my argument for, for 57.57. No, we, we needed to do a lot better job of editing that. Yeah, that, that would be my argument. Like I, we can make suggestions, say, hey, they're not like stable, they're social media, they're not part of the standards. That would I agree. Like the, the hard cases are, for example, like OEs, like apparently I think OEs should be, and, and also other client implementations should be allowed to be linked and then you to you it's a no it's a no-brainer and they should not be i just don't think this is really related to accepting 57 57 like we should debate this at another time but like i honestly don't want to leave this call again without making a decision i think it's a it, I, I think it's an example as that like we are accepting 57 size by seven with the strong sense of default and i'm what what I'm Referring to is if we accept 577, then default is not accepting Go ETH unless it's approved. What I'm looking, I, I'm I'm more inclined to have another version that is more open. Default is allowed unless it's it, it, it's being spread down, like in those case, in those middle grounds. I, I like to be more open. I, I'm 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 using it as an example, not to say it's relevant directly, but indirectly, it's just what default will will play out. Does, does that yeah, I think we've already seen like. The editors are against that. We don't want to like curate a list of like non-acceptable sources. That's a lot more work than a small list of acceptable sources. Yeah, I would agree. I think the idea of having 5757 is, I mean, from where I am seeing is to make it difficult for people to have uh, uh, like external resources uh, added to the EIP. We generally speaking, we are not, uh, the group doesn't seem to be in favor of having allowing all the external links. So if external link has to be there, there should be certain processes in place. And this sounds like a good one. I'm in good middle ground from at least, we can give it a try for next three months. No, and as it's written, I it's not acceptable. Make, Which part do you not accept? There's two aspects to it. What I really don't like is forcing the author to make a separate EIP to allow for a source. You're uh, not forcing the author. <laughs> Anybody can make it. Right, but I don't want them. It's just clutter. Um, it makes sense for the editors, the editors to maintain a small list of sources in EIP one, 
that just says these are acceptable sources. Don't worry about it. Yeah. We will also have a list in EIP one. So, um, so like Marian, I, I think when you said everyone, anyone can make the petition. In reality, is that the author is being blocked from submitting those links into their EIP, and they either have to do it themselves or they have to submit the EIP. Right? That's the reality. If we say, hey, any e editors are striking down the EIP are going to submit one, then we can confidently say that that doesn't add to editors' work, uh, authors' work. But we don't. We all know that's not going to happen. So. I think Greg makes a valid point. This is a hurdle, and this will end up in practice in in, uh, in practice making authors submit those EIP or have to give up the links and remove the links. That is the point of this EIP. It is supposed to be restrictive. It is not supposed to be trivial to add links to EIPs. I honestly don't care whether or not it's an EIP or if it's an update to EIP one. I think it's better that they're EIPs because if we rely on just making a PR to EIP one, then we're like further increasing our reliance on like this GitHub infrastructure. And it's not easy for us to like have the history or like the rationale for adding things and making decisions. Like I get it. We already use GitHub for a lot of things. In this case, I think it's good if we can have this as like a separate artifact. But if this is like the thing that's stopping 5757 from happening, then I think we should just remove the concept of of having source or origin EIPs and just say you have to open a PR to EIP one to change it, and we can discuss on the PR thread. I mean, that, that is that what that's we want to do. Better. All right, I'll make that change. All right, what else is blocking fifty seven fifty seven? Uh, free source and free access distribution. That uh, and do you that when when you say remove the requirement for distribution, that that is removed. Uh, so no, I, I am not ever going to back away from requiring free access to an EIP or to an EIP's like links, but the requirement for redistribution, that's the, um, so like if there's a requirement in 5757 that says sources should not allow redistributing in the assets directory. Um, and I think Greg had an issue with that because of context, like if, if it's on the, is that right? So I, I can remove that. I don't really I mean, know. I don't understand what it's saying there. I'm just Shh. pointing out that on the one hand, it's good to have things in assets. On the other hand, there's both legal aspects as to whether we had a right to put it there. Um, so that's where a, a list really helps that we've judged as editors that we don't have a problem publishing things there because um, you don't want the author randomly putting things there. Uh, it is part of what we publish. Um, and when you put things there, there is a, you have taken them out of context, but that's where I keep wanting a reference section with a full citation so that the implementer can find the larger context easily enough. Um, there doesn't need to be only one link in the reference. Multiple links are appreciated. Um, So in, in the BLS example, the, the canonical link to the publisher's page was paywalled, but um, the DOI link went to the same page, um, but the ePrint server had a free copy. And the ePrint server is a pretty stable source. I, I don't think 10 years or, I don't think there's any particular definition of stable we can give, but it's a judgment call and ePrint's pretty good. Um, and so then, are we hung up here on the redistribution aspect or on the paid wall aspect? I'm just saying there's decisions the editors are going to have to make. And I don't think we can need to set up all this policy in advance. Just say that, you know, we can agree that there's a list of sources that we simply approve. I, I think we've got some number already in mind that aren't controversial to us. Um, any other links we do just have to take up as judgment calls. There really haven't been that many of them and whether to right. add, whether to add a particular source to the EIP one 
is an editorial editor's decision. The, the author doesn't need to be involved. And I can't see creating separate EIPs for every change that we make to EIP one. It's, it's, it is uh, still an editor decision. Um, and we said, we're not going to do the EIPs. It's going to be a PR to EIP one. The yeah. reality is, is that sometimes the author is going to have to make the PR and advocate for that link. Like if an editor generally reviews the PR and says, I don't think this is a good link. The author is going to need to advocate. Like it shouldn't necessarily be our job to like advocate for every single link. But I think not okay. having the EIP makes it simpler for them. That, okay. I think that's the core of our disagreement. Yeah. Um, allowing a particular link for a particular EIP should not say that that is a good source for all EIPs. Yeah, uh, but we, we've like already discussed that what you're describing is how we like previously managed the links for EIPs and the editors as a whole are like against this. And so we're trying to find a compromise. Right. And I think like the compromise that we're like trying to zero in on is creating a list of sources that we think are good for all EIPs. It's not perfect, but I don't know if we're gonna be able to get agreement on like a per EIP acceptance list. Well, it hit me personally where I wanted to link to a paper by Turing. Uh, it actually wasn't paywalled, and there was a strong objection to linking to that paper. Um, Is it DOI'd? Um, I, yeah, there was a DOI for it. There was a link. So, yeah, was a I mean, I, it was fine, but um, yeah. So, I mean, so I think we what, should what allow. The DOI links. Yeah. So, so what I was suggesting, what, what like how I would do the DOI if we were using the old style fifty seven fifty seven, where it has its own individual EIP. But we're not doing that, so let's not open that back up again. But if we were, my idea for DOIs was to have, like the title, author, uh, publication date, the DOI number, and just any arbitrary link to a free copy of the paper. Uh, that is how I would do the DOI, like reference section. Um, but that man, I. I don't like, I really don't want to go into like the sp super specific details because like, I don't think that we should be linking to any arbitrary link. I think we need to like have a, you know, general link to the DOI object and expect people to go find it. Okay. Because like, I don't, cause I mean, lots of professors will like put a paper on their, on their like university webpage. And like, I don't want to sit, have people like being, oh, this was the free source. Or maybe you were linking to stuff that, you know, is paid content. And we shouldn't allow like links like that. There's like legal concerns there. I think we should just link to the DOI object identifier website. So, so then how do you verify that there is a free publication available? Like, I mean, I think that we need to remove the must uh, for it not being paid and have a, like a very strict requirement of should not. But if it has a DOI identifier, it's almost always accessible in some mechanism for free. And there's not, I just don't think there's really a way around this. I have a similar view. I think we should not require it to be like completely free. Like I, I want it, but uh, I, I don't think that requirement can help uh, improve the things over, overnight. Would you be willing to relax the must not link to paid content? and just have it be extremely strict should not. That would help a lot, yes. Yeah, mm. sure. <laughs> I, I think it's a dumb idea. I don't think core devs are ever going to pay for access to something. They're not, they're not, definitely and not. So I don't think there's any point in allowing non-free resources because i mean it's just like it's not about i mean i don't ever want to allow non-free resources but there is a problem where like how do we uniformly link to doi objects and also ensure that there is a free link without also running into like potential legal concerns of like redistributing copyrighted material well because we won't be redistributing it somebody else will that's that's the point but i yeah but i also like don't like the idea of just like you know, I don't want to put a library genesis link in the EIP repository. I don't want to put a link to a professor's website in the EIP repository. I would rather just link to the DOI object and just assume that people like know how to like access that information. I mean, I think that's just like 
if there is worse than having a link to the free copy and the DOI number. I can I can live with that. If there's a DOI number, there's a whole organization that maintains links. Um, if there's a full citation, Google will usually find you free links. Um, there's libraries. I don't <laughs> mind. I don't mind if we have to to resolve this. I don't mind pushing onto the implementer a bit of work to go find this. I think it's a fantasy that an implementer can just sit down with an EIP and wham Obama implement it. It's hard work, um, but it's, as long as there's a way to find the information, Google does. I I would prefer there, that they be allowed to include the link, but um, like to avoid the impasse where I was, I simply removed the link and put the citation in line and the uh, the bot quit complaining and uh, emerged. So. <laughs> um okay so I, uh, <laughs> it, so I, I guess in the interest I, of holding up this discussion it, anymore uh, i'll change it to a should not but um i, I mean know. i want you to advocate for every single source that there's like a free accessible um you know resource and i we can talk about exactly how to format that and I think I would probably be okay if like the default link was to the DOI object, but we had like a list of like free links to all of the things that are linked. We can figure yeah, out the exact a, yeah, exactly. way that that works. I'm happy to do that. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that we're good to move forward to 5777 in that case. Like we resolved the separate EIP issue. We're gonna do it as a PR and Thief one, and we have resolved the like um, redistribution. I don't know if we have to remove it. It's already a should not. To me, like, it doesn't need to be removed, but we can remove it. And then for the paid content, I think a should not would be preferable. And I think that, like, you know, general editors should always advocate for free resources. Sounds good. So if we have to summarize, uh, there would be small changes to the current proposal of 5757, but we are, as a group, uh, looking forward to have that merge so just to enumerate the changes i'm going to make and then if i miss something please speak up now um, i am going to remove the eip per origin section and it'll just be a pr into eep one um, we will figure out a way to specify free links for doi objects um, and I will remove the non-redistribution requirement. Is there anything else that I need to change? It's good to me. Greg, if you have uh, anything to add or you are fine with this uh, number of changes that Sam listed? I think I'm fine. And yeah, I could, I can try to review the, the document after the changes have happened. Um, so I, I don't quite understand the document as written. So once the changes are there, I think I'll be able to understand better. Um, Perfect. Okay. That's that sounds it's, good. My, it's my fault. I, I've been busy trying to find my eternal living. So this is <laughs> this is not uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm busy inventing the technology that we're trying to sell uh, to get the money eternal living. So this has slipped down the <laughs> Not a problem. One last question uh, to the group. Do we think that we may need a breakout room for uh, like uh, with the changes? Sam will be making some changes and uh, we can discuss that uh, somewhere before the next EIPAP meeting. I think one already sort of happened on all core devs, but, um, <laughs> but the answer is probably yes. Okay. I don't want to have a breakout room. All right. I, I honestly think we should merge 5757 as is. It's a draft. Right. We need to start moving it to final and we'll draft. have. Yeah, you're right. Yes. Yeah, we'll have Sam right. make yeah. the changes and we can review the train changes directly to right. it. We're at draft stage. Get something in. <laughs> right. And I think that would even help with some EAPW changes that Sam is already uh, working on. So we can have that proposal merged as draft. Yeah. A lot, a lot of this, a lot of this, the community can argue about during review. That's what review is for. 
Uh, Sam, are you going to represent the food source in the format of uh, regular expression? Is there any formal way that you want to establish? This? Um, I I would love thought? regular. I would love regular expression. Um, that makes it really easy in EPW, but uh, I, it's probably going to be more complicated than that. Okay. Yeah, just like I, I, I have no have strong preference, but just just make the e, 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 EIPW much easier. Yeah. Well, yeah. Nothing else. All right. Thanks for the great effort. Talk to you all in two Thank weeks. You. Thank you, Anya. Right. Have a good one. Yeah. Again, thank you for the efforts, even though I grumble about them. <laughs> hey, it wouldn't be covered in if people didn't grumble. So, yeah, I, I yeah. hate that pro proposal, but I really appreciate your effort. <laughs> all right, guys, yeah. see you all in two weeks, and we can continue discussing on Catalyst Discord or Ether and Discord wherever possible. Have a good one, everyone. Yeah, thanks, Roger. Thanks for hosting. Bye.